everyone and welcome to Advocate Today. I'm your host LaPortia. Joining me today is my friend, my colleague, and my fellow anchor, Erin Dean. All right. Hey, friend. Hey. Hello. Hello, LaPortia. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Well, I'm just honored to be in your presence today. Oh, it's nice to be in the guest seat for once. Well, listen, I know that's right. Dot com. Aaron Dean dot com. Go check it out. Listen, first there was Elmo checking in on mental health. And now there's the cookie monster checking in on shrinkflation, as he put it. All right. So, Aaron, what is shrinkflation? Tell me about this situation. So you remember growing up and your mom saying like, hey, listen, I'm paying for a bunch of air in these bag of chips. That's essentially what it is. We're paying more and we're getting less. So Cookie Monster tweeted, well, not tweeted, well, spoke out and said, me hate shrinkflation. Me cookies are getting smaller. And this is an issue that a lot of Americans are feeling across the country where they get, we're buying goods, whether it's a food product or whatever, and they're getting less of it, but paying more. So of course, the portion, you know, we love to have a good time here, but I'm going to give you some, some facts. You ready? All right. Let me know what the conversation is. I'm going to give here, okay? Let's go. So according to a December report from 2023, Oreos and Doritos specifically have become 26.4% more expensive since 2019, and 9.8% of that price increase has resulted in less chips and cookies. So this is what the Cookie Monster is talking about. You're making me pay more, and you're giving me a little bit less, and I'm, I'm, I've had it. He's let up. You know, when we were kids, I think about Aaron when the chips used to be five for a dollar, and oh then it God. went to four for a dollar, and then it went to like three for a dollar, and then it went to two for a dollar, and now it's a dollar. Okay, yes. so inflation is a real thing. Speaking of educating audiences, reality show host RuPaul is co-founding a bookstore as well as launching a bus tour to distribute banned. Books. Let's talk about it. The queer icon hopes the bookstore named Alstora will shine a brighter light on authors who are underrepresented. Aaron, listen, tell me more about like RuPaul's mission here. We talked a lot about the book bans here at our company. Um, so I would love to know more. Well, that, that's exactly what RuPaul is trying to do. Shine the light on those whose light is being dimmed at this moment. As you know, we are seeing states all across the country ban books and tearing down DEI initiatives. And RuPaul says, you know what? I'm taking a stand and let's get a book. Look, you want to read? Let's read. OK. Oh, take a read to another Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So like you said, this is an effort to shine a light. And so some of the stops along this bus tour this week are going to include Phoenix, Tallahassee, Atlanta. Did I say it right? Atlanta? Or Atlanta, 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 baby. Atlanta, okay. And <laughs> Memphis and San Antonio. So on the website, you will see a bunch of books that are very inclusive, that are women focused, that are queer focused, that are by black authors, things that people feel like people shouldn't be reading. And one thing that I know for sure from reading growing up and even as an adult, that's where I have learned so much. It has really gotten my imagination going and it's made me a more inclusive and well-rounded person. So definitely check that out. And of course, you can see that full story over on AvgaChannel.com. You know, I was a big reader, you mm. know, not to brag, but I won all of the book contests. Okay. And uh, the book Listen, I was all, what was that, um, ARCT or whatever? I yes. always read at the highest level and I would get lost in a book. I remember getting lost in Harry Potter and getting getting lost in like some of the books that are now banned that I, you know, it's like, why are we banning these books? Um, but I love that RuPaul is taking his reading, you know, on tour, right? Reading the country. That This is the true meaning of reading the country. Okay. I think that this is a very unique and needed idea. I did some research myself and I found that in 2018 to 2019, only 10.5 percent of African-American kindergartners were meeting the reading readiness benchmark. And African-American children make up 28 percent of the United States illiterate demographic. Um, and we know that there are a lot of reasons why that is. So, you know, that is a further conversation. But I think this is a very great idea. So, RuPaul, please continue to read the country. All right. So it is Women's History Month, and I definitely want to use my platform to highlight amazing women everywhere. So I'm asking my guests to bring on their favorite women, women that they would really like to shout out. Um, so 
the spotlight today, Erin. Who are you shining a spotlight on this great Women's History Month in March? So, of course, the first thing people are going to expect is he's going to say Beyonce. Not today, guys. Not today. But I am highlighting another phenomenal woman by the name of Hope Giselle Godsey. I hope I said her, her new last name correct. But she's a Black trans woman who's an or organizer, an author, an activist, a DEI and comm specialist, a public speaker. She is truly the definition of, in my opinion, a pioneer, someone who is really speaking up and speaking out about today's issues that surround Blackness, queer identity and, you know, yeah. tr being trans and all that. And I think it's really important that we continue to talk about these people and elevate their messages as they elevate the calls, you know, as we could try to continue to move forward as a people. And of course, recently she was announced um, to be the new president, executive director and CEO for the National Trans Visibility March. So she's really doing a lot of great things. Check her out on Instagram. She's always up there conversing, starting a new conversation and continuing others. And if she needs to wrap some of y'all up. So she is the real deal. And she's very, she's gorgeous. 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 I mean, okay. like the bone structure is like bone structuring. The, hair, the body is everything. bodying. The hair is like beautiful. You know, so um, you know, I was thinking about who I would highlight today. Yes. And I think that who I'm going to highlight, Erin, is somebody that we both truly love and who I feel like, you know, just made history in the country music <laughs> world and um, none other than the queen, the one and only Beyonce. Yeah. And the reason I'm going to highlight her is not just because she's Beyonce, which is a compliment within itself. It's because what she has done for black women in country music has literally been one of a kind. Okay. She has um, definitely taken black women on her back from country music and said, I'm going to bust down the, I'm going to use my platform. I'm going to use my voice. I'm going to use everything that I have right now to bust down the doors of country music and really shine a light on all of the talent that is over here. And mm -hmm. people are, uh, you know, many people have said it couldn't be done there. And they say it can't be done. It can't be done. She can't do it. And guess what? She said, she the lie detector test said that was a lie, honey. Yeah, she did it and she's doing it effortlessly. What is that thing from, was it, hey, queen, here you are again, raising the bar and doing it effortlessly, okay? I feel like if it was Beyonce, we'd be like, hey, queen. I, I why not like just tag? And it wasn't, I just, I just thinking about it. I know they try to count you out, but you let them know, don't talk about it, be about it. About it. Just like I'm being about it. And I'm the top winning, the most winningest women, woman ever, okay? That's why we call her the queen bee. Period. Okay. Listen, Aaron, thank you so much for joining me today. It was so great to talk to you, and I can't wait to see you back in a few weeks. Please <laughs> have me back, and I'll be ready to spill some tea next time, okay? All right, because we know you love the housewife shit. Okay. okay. This ain't Phaedra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I can read you down. Okay. Guess, um, football. Well, make me call Porsche. Okay. <laughs>